Hey everyone, this is Alex from WarnOffKeys.com, and welcome to my Linux Crash Course video. In this video, we're going to go over all of the essentials to Linux, and we're going to be connecting to a Linux VPS using a hosting company known as Vulture. So if you want a free VPS to follow along with, you can go to WarnOffKeys.com forward slash VPS, or you can click on this link in the description as well as the pinned comment. It should send you to a page like this with this quick few minute video explaining how to claim $100 in VPS credit for up to 30 days. And after that, you can move forward with the tutorial with a free VPS. However, if you already have a VPS, then go ahead and log into that. And you should be sent to a screen similar to this one, depending on what console you're using. So we're gonna start off by talking about how you can navigate around different directories, which are essentially folders. So the first thing I want to show you is how to identify your current directory. We can do PWD, which stands for print working directory. And this will show us our current directory that we're navigated to. In this case, for me, it is forward slash root. Yours might be something different. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can create a new directory by using mkdir, which stands for make directory. Then we can add a space and then the name of our directory. So in this case, I can make a new folder called test. And so now we want to list all the files in our current directory. We can do that with the ls command. And this is going to show all the folders and files within our current directory. Folders will be in blue and files will be in white. So here we have the test folder that we just made, as well as the snap folder, which may or may not be there depending on what operating system and hosting provider you're using. For now, the important part is that test was actually created from the last command we just ran. Now, another thing you could do with the ls command is you can actually list all the files and folders within a target directory. So if I just run ls, that's for the current directory we are in, which in this case is forward slash root. But if I want to see all the files and folder inside of our test folder, I can say ls space test, and that will list everything. However, there is nothing in there because we just created it, and so obviously nothing is listed. But if there were files inside, we would see them listed out similar to this right here. So ls with no arguments afterwards means to use the current directory, and ls with a folder name afterwards will list all the files and folders inside of that target folder. So next, I'm gonna show you how you can actually navigate into a certain folder. We can use cd, which stands for change directory, a space, and then the name of the target folder. In this case, let's navigate into the test folder. And now we see after this colon right here, we did have a tilde, and now we see forward slash test right here. And anything after the colon on this part of the screen right here is going to be the current path. A tilde means your home directory. Because I am logged in as the root user, the home directory for me is forward slash root. So that's where we have been this entire time. And now we're inside of our home directory, forward slash test. So forward slash root, forward slash test. To confirm this, we can rerun the pwd command. And it says that we are in forward slash root, forward slash test as expected. You can also use the cd command to go back directories. So if I do cd space dot dot, we'll go back into the previous directory. If I do pwd, we now see root is right here. And we can keep using this, and we can see that we are now in just the home directory, which has some things that we don't want to necessarily mess around with if you're new to Linux. Let's go ahead and navigate back to our root directory. There's two ways we can do this. The first is to simply do cd forward slash root, and that would work. But because root is our user that we're logged into, we can actually do cd tilde, and that'll bring us back into the root directory because as I mentioned, tilde represents the home directory for your current user. In this case, that is forward slash root. Next, I'm gonna show you some useful console tips. The first of which is how to clear your console. We have a clear command which you can run. However, there's an easier way. So if I just spam ls a few times to add some things to our console, you can use control L or command L on a Mac as a shortcut to go ahead and clear your console. The next thing is that we can use a history command. This is going to show you a lot of the previous commands that you've ran. We can also use an up arrow to go back to previous commands, and we can keep pressing up until we find a command we want to run. For example, here's the clear command, and I can simply just press enter, and it clears our console. So pressing the up arrow on your keyboard is a great way to go back to commands if you're having to do multiple repetitive commands. Next, we're gonna be talking about how you can manage and create files. And the first thing I want to show you is how to create a file and open it within a text editor all within your VPS. So there's multiple text editors you can use, and the easiest one, in my opinion, is going to be nano. So I can say nano, space, and then the file name. 
let's call this notes. And if I press enter, it's now gonna open this up in a text editor where we can actually type in here. At the bottom, we see a number of different controls we have. The caret, which is an up arrow, which is using a shift and six. That is going to be the symbol for control. So we can use control X to exit. We can use control W for search. We can use control K for cut, and the list goes on. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in hello world. You can obviously type in whatever text you want. And then I'm going to use control X to close this. It's gonna ask if you want to save the modified buffer, basically saying, do you wanna save the file? I can press Y. And then it's gonna ask for the file name to write to. By default, it will highlight the actual file name that we're editing right now, but you can change this here. Most of the time, you're just gonna press enter to accept the current file name. Now, if I use LS, we now see notes is white. And that means that it is a file. Again, the folders are in blue and the files are in white. Next up is how you can create a file without actually editing the file. So you may just want to create a file without opening nano. We can do this with the touch command, touch space example. And if I use ls, we now see example is a file that exists. Next is how you can copy a file or a folder. We can use the cp command, which stands for copy. So we can do cp space example, which is the file we're gonna copy, and then a space, and then the new file name. We can say example two. And if I use ls, we now see example and example two. You can also copy folders such as test, but we have to do something slightly different. If we just try a normal copy, let's say test and test two, it says dash r not specified emitting directory test. So we have to provide the dash r flag to our copy command. And flags are things that are typically added to the commands with a dash before them. And they add additional functionality or specify certain rules for your command. So in this case, we have to add the dash r flag to our copy command. So I can say copy dash r space test test two. I can now use ls and we see test and test2. Next is how we're going to rename or move files. And this is using the same command, which is mv, which stands for move. So let's say I want to rename example2 to example underscore 2. I can say mv space example space example underscore 2. Now if I use ls, we no longer see example2, but rather only example underscore 2. We can also use this to rename files into different directories, essentially moving them to different directories. So if I do ls space test, this will list all the files in there, and there's currently nothing in there. But if I do mv example underscore two space test, which is the directory name, I can now do ls, and we see example underscore two is no longer in here, it's just the normal example two. But if I do ls space test, we're now going to list all the files and folders within the test directory, which in theory is where we just moved this to, thanks to the second argument right here. So if I press enter, we see example underscore two as expected. Now here's a perfect example of when the console is getting too cluttered, I can use control L or command L on a Mac to go ahead and clear it. Let's say that I now want to delete example two. I can use the RM command, which stands for remove, and then specify the file name, in this case, example two. Using ls now shows that that file is no longer there. Let's also try deleting this test2 directory right here. So I can say rm test2, and it says cannot remove test2 is a directory. We do have to add in an additional flag when working with directories. I can say rm space dash capital R space test2. And now if I use ls, test2 is no longer there. So it is dash capital R when we are removing folders and is going to be dash lowercase r when we are trying to copy folders. This stands for recursive. So it is going to recursively delete all the files and folders inside of the test2 directory and then eventually delete the test2 directory itself. Next up, we're going to be talking about how you can install and manage packages, which are essentially third-party pieces of software that you can run on your VPS. A common package to install is called fail to ban, which adds some additional security I'm using Ubuntu on this VPS. If you're using a different operating system, you'll have to look up how you can install things on that operating system because it might be slightly different. So on Ubuntu, we can say apt install fail to with a number two ban. If we press enter, it's going to automatically install it. However, I already have this installed on the newest version, so I only see a few lines of text here. For you, this might take a few seconds to actually work, 
because it's obviously installing something. Now let's say that we want fail to ban to automatically be ran whenever our VPS restarts. And you can use this for practically any software, I believe. This command is often useful if your VPS is going to be hosting databases. Obviously, you want those databases to run whenever your VPS restarts so your database isn't offline. So on Ubuntu, you can say system, CTL, all one word, space, enable, which is the flag we have to specify in order to have that target software automatically run on startup. And then the next argument is going to be the actual name of the software. In this case, fail to ban. So now if I were to reboot the VPS, fail to ban would automatically start up. And we can also check the status of certain software by using system CTL, again, all one word, status, and then the name of the software. We see this green running right here, which means everything is okay. We can press Q to go ahead and exit that. We can also stop certain services. So if I press up to go to the previous command, I can go back to the status right here. And I can change this to stop. And it took a few seconds, but if I press up a couple times, we can now view the status. And we see that there's no green thing anywhere because it's not actually started. So I can press Q to exit this. And we can start this up again, and you can also restart things. So instead of status, we can say restart. Or alternatively, you can just say start. Either one will work. But restart will obviously shut down the service if it's running and then boot it back up again. So if I do this and then I check the status again, we now see that it's running. And so these are some useful commands that you can use in order to manage your actual services. Now there's only three more commands I want to show you, one of which is how to update a certain service. I can use apt upgrade and then the service name, in this case, fail to ban. And this is going to automatically update the fail to ban service or whatever service you specified. In this case, I already had the latest version, so it's not going to do much, but in your case, it might go through a lot of text on your console and actually update things. Another thing you can do is update all of your packages at once with apt update. Notice how this is upgrade for a certain one, and update is going to be to update everything. So running this might take a little longer than usual. I just ran this earlier when I was writing the blog post for this video, and so everything is up to date already. But normally this will take a few minutes. And the last thing I want to show you is how you can remove services or remove packages from your VPS. So if I say apt remove, fail to ban, it will now remove it, and it's going to ask me if I want to continue. If I did add a dash y flag to the end of this command, it will not ask me for this. But because I didn't, I have to specify why. And now it's going to go through and actually remove the software from my VPS. Thanks for watching the video. If you want early access to future tutorials, consider clicking on the join button down below the video to support the channel.